Everybody, their mother's always asking for more abs, right? You've asked for them, I've asked for them. I think anybody said that, any breathing person that has a gym membership somewhere, or if you're watching this video, guarantee you've always wanted another ab exercise, right? Because you get tired and bored of doing the same shit over and over. The issue I have with abs though, and I'm not, a, I'm not an ab person. I'm a, I'm a big core person, but I'm not a big abs person. And the difference is when you do your abs, you're just focusing on the front side of your body, right? Where your core is actually the entire rounding, like the front side, the obliques, the last, or everything that connects into the pelvis, right? That gives you good posture and form through all your exercises. The problem I have with abs is this. Everything we do these days is here. We're crunched, we're forward, and we're just in these shitty forward bending positions. And then we're gonna go on the ground, we're gonna go back into these forward bending positions and make these muscles even tighter, or we think we are, and doing nothing to bounce them out on the backside. Which is why typically a lot of people when they do their ab exercise, they're like, Jay, I always feel my lower back and my quads. It's because you're in a position where you're activating those already shortened muscles and it's taking away from the exercise from the abs and the, uh, from the exercise and the muscle you're actually trying to target where we figured out a long time ago, just through the different mentors we had and just our own self-discovery, that if you do abs from the standing position, there's an entirely different aspect that you can't recreate when you're on the ground. You can, but it's so rare. The difference is that if you, in terms of your pelvis and your hips in particular, right? When you're doing your abs, you're stabilizing the front side of your body. But if I'm able to stand and I gotta use my glutes to hold me up, now I'm stabilizing both the front side and the back side of my body. So I'm able to keep myself in a better position where I'm able to target the core and the abs without overarching and tweaking the back or the hip flexors or you've done abs. All the muscles that you always tweak that kill you the next day, we're like, wow, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a bunch of abs. My six pack's gonna look great, but my fucking lower back's gonna feel like shit. That's the reason why. So we try doing as many ab exercises from the standing position as possible. Also because I hate getting on the floor. My knees hurt. Some days I'm just not beat for. So anything I can do standing, better for me. We're gonna do this with a kettlebell, but you can also do it with a dumbbell, right? All I'm gonna do, let's uh, Susie, let's use the lines, right? I want to use the line just so this way you guys can see where I am in relation to like where the body's going, right? So now you can do same side arm, same side leg. You could do opposite arm, opposite leg. There is, a, there is a benefit to both. I prefer same side arm, same side leg. And we're gonna stand on one leg because you've all probably seen people doing this at the gym, right? By the way, let's put something to bed right now. For all you lovely individuals out there who do this exercise, please don't ever do this. If Johnny has a five pound dumbbell in this hand, and Johnny also has a five pound dumbbell in this hand, and Johnny's standing here like a dumbass going back and forth in the gym, what is Johnny doing? He's playing fucking seesaw with himself. He's not doing shit because you're counterbalancing everything out and you're shifting from your hip side to side that you're not using the abs. The reason why we do these exercises of standing on one leg is so this way we have to isolate and take the pelvis out of the equation so I have to balance. And now when I'm doing my oblique squeezing, right? My oblique squeezing, my side bending, I'm focusing on the muscle between the, the rib and the hip, my obliques, a little bit of lats too, that are involved for lateral flexion, right? The side bending. Versus if I'm just swinging my hips back and forth, my abs aren't doing anything, it's my hips moving back and forth. Hopefully you guys get that. Please, if you don't understand that, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. That's just, it's a, that's a fucking basic concept, right? But anyway, so that's why we do my one leg. So you take the pelvis out, so you're just focusing on the obliques, right? What I'm gonna do, standing on my one leg, I'm gonna be right here. If you notice, my head's always over my foot. You notice that, because that's where my balance is. I'm gonna come out of that alignment. I'm head over foot on the right side. Notice how my ninth rib to my hip, there's space there. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift and contract. My head's over my left foot. My weight is still on my right foot, but I'm over my left foot, right? So I'm getting that contraction and I'm squeezing. And I'm down, I'm back. I'm gonna do seven reps. Five, four. Now you see what I'm doing with my hand. What I'm basically doing, and we'll get into this in another video, so I'm using my lats and my obliques to help me stabilize. I'm gonna hold it for seven seconds now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna do a second set of seven. Seven, good save, six, five. You see how I'm keeping all that weight in the right leg. Three, I make little adjustments that I need to. Two, I'm gonna hold it for seven seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and I'm going to get more time. And if you notice, I'm not letting my chest collapse forward like this, right? I'm looking down, chest forward, shoulders back. My front gyroscope is open, my back gyroscope is closed. Core is engaged, feeling the burn, loving the burn, I'm gonna hold it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, good. That's one side. Now I'm gonna go to the other side, right? 
keeping in mind one side's gonna be a lot more trash than the other. I'm right here, right? Rib to the hip. First couple reps are gonna feel a little off because your balance was just set to that one side. Right? You're gonna see a lot going on with the foot and the ankle and the knee because it's balancing and stabilizing. I'm gonna get to my seven. I'm not sure if I'm there because I've been talking. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. They're still tight and now I'm back to moving for seven and then I'm stabilizing for seven, right? I really gotta focus on my left side. So I use my right side for everything. I got bad back issues. Had bad back issues, not working through them. Hold it at seven, six, five. You can see how I wanna shift to this right foot. I'm forcing myself to stay in the left foot. One more time. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. And I hold it, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then I'm done. And that is the standing side oblique sequence, right? We're going, I'm gonna get a little technical on it. So we're gonna go ipsilateral. Ipsilateral, right, means same side arm, same side leg. Contralateral would mean, we're holding the kettlebell here, opposite arm, opposite leg, right? The bell's in the same side that I'm standing on, therefore same side arm, same side leg, or ipsilateral, for all you smart people out there, right? Or you trainers who are watching this video, in case you wanna know, right? The main difference is that, in both exercises, my shoulder blades are tight, which is what keeps my spine straight as opposed to collapsing down and forward and then I have nothing. You gotta keep the shoulder blades tightened together while you go. Your spine's still gonna move, but you don't wanna collapse forward because when you collapse at one end of your spine, right, now you saw my shoulders, but watch my hips, right? Watch my lower back. When I collapse my shoulders, I collapse my lower back also. It's a reflex your spine has, all right? Standing side obliques, right? Take that, put in your crack pipe and smoke it. Seven reps moving, seven second holding, three on each side, that's one round. I would typically do that in between your upper body, your lower body exercises. It's a great standing ab exercise. And especially for those of you guys who are walking around like this, like most of us are these days, right? It's a great way to start bringing everything back to balance again and get some killer obliques for the fucking summertime, all right? Guys, like always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below or shoot us a DM or a PM wherever you want. We're all over social media. Um, and if you have any questions, get them out to us this way. Either myself or one of the coaches can help you out with working through whatever you need clarity and guidance on. And give it a shot. It's a great exercise. All right. Thanks for tuning in again. See you in the next video.